This is Nattering with E with Eric Friedland. Welcome to Visionaries Global Media, your number one source for podcasting entertainment. Visionaries Global Media, envisioning excellence on a global scale. This meeting is being recorded. What up, world? It's your boy E coming at you from the Nattering with E Studios. This episode is actually going out first before the next one, uh, which was taped earlier. Uh that's a little bit confusing, but that's just how it is here at Nattering with E. Anyways, uh, we were supposed to have Lee Brennan on, who um, I mentioned a lot in next week's episode, but he was unable to join us. So instead, I, I called an audible, and I was able to get my good buddy Nick Baum from the internet to join me. So, Nick, what's going on, man? The scheduling conflicts are always... Uh being in the bum yeah exactly exactly i i I remember um when we were uh, the first time we ever met i was i was like is your last name really bomb and you're like no it's it's just an internet handle man i mean i mean for most people that would be a (laughs) an assumption they could safely make yeah yeah i think we met up with uh uh what's your name brylin or brillin I never knew how to pronounce it, to be honest. Yeah, fair enough. I just remember, um, I was like, let's grab poutine. I've never had poutine before. And then I tapped out like two bites in. <laughs> like, can't do it. So. Oh, was that that time? Was it uh, like the Smokes Poutinery on Bluer somewhere? Yes. Yes. Which I think is gone now. But yeah, it was that. You know what? A whole bunch of those have closed down, but like others have opened. It's kind of strange. Like me not being... Uh, up in the poutine business knowing how these things work but it's interesting yeah absolutely absolutely so um did you watch all in or any of uh, the wrestling recently okay. of course i did there's too much wrestling on <laughs> even if you're keeping to one promotion there's too much wrestling because they have friggin uh two hours on wednesday an hour on friday two hours sometimes three hours if they're doing one of those stupid battle of the belts things on saturday And like, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't do it. Like I I'm keeping up, but it's really annoying because I like to mix up my, uh, my watching and I only really give myself, you know, half hour, hour, maybe a day to watch these things. So sometimes it can take me a whole week to get through everything. And that's not counting ring of honor, which I don't really watch, but sometimes you hear something interesting happens on there and you got to check it out. And like, God damn, is another hour I have to watch now. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's the same with like indie wrestling too. It's, there's just, there's just so much to, to go through. I, um, I have a couple of different, uh, services that I subscribe to. So like IWTV trailer, um, for a short time, I, I even bought progress on demand, uh, for a month. And I was like, I, I I have I have a ton of free time on my hands, but not enough time to watch all the wrestling, if that makes any sense. <laughs> I so. refuse to call it thriller. It's it was it's always fight to me. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And there's like 85 promotions on there too. And I'm just like I it's 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 great for the podcast because I have enough I have enough content in terms of wrestling, but then I'm also like uh I don't know if I can watch everything so <laughs> well if you're if you're into this stuff and you have the time to do it that's such a great value for that kind of person mm-hmm. like, for me i'm pretty much just there for AEW, and if they were ever to get their own streaming thing and move to that i would have to really consider also moving yeah absolutely do you buy the uh pay-per-views i i never do i'm just I can't justify paying like 50 bucks for, for a show. (laughs) No, I don't. You know what? If they were like 1999 or maybe 2999, Mm -hmm. I might think about it, you know, more than once a year, but like 50 bucks. Like I, I, I I checked it out on uh, fight site and I was like, you know, 29 or 39. I'm like, okay, that's not bad. Maybe I, Oh, us dollars. Never mind. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's like I'm not paying 70 bucks Canadian just to watch um, uh, Daniel Bryan kick uh, some guy in the head. So, or Brian Maybe. Danielson, sorry. You know what I used to do? I don't know that this necessarily holds water anymore. But when I was younger, I used to judge the value of the time I spend on things, like, or the money I spend on things by using, like, a, you know, a theater movie as a benchmark. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. for example, like, you know, you'd pay nine bucks or 11 bucks for a, for a movie. And, you know, on average, a movie will probably go an hour and a half or two hours, right? Yeah. So you figure, okay, I'm spending, you know, let's say five bucks an hour on this entertainment is something that I'm else that I'm going to do going to get me $5 worth of value per hour. Right. Yeah. And like I said, it probably doesn't bear out anymore because of inflation and everything. And honestly, I don't remember how much movies cost now because I haven't been to one in a while, but um, I don't think that a three hour pay-per-view for like 50 or 60 bucks, even if it's 50, because that's like 17 bucks an hour. That, that's more than minimum wage. Like, yeah. <laughs> never mind a movie. So, like, well, how am I going to justify paying that when I can do so much else that I also enjoy for that amount of money? Yeah, for sure. I, I remember, like, 20 years ago when uh used to be able to go to, like, Silver City and um, watch the movies. I, I, I mean, sorry, not watch the movies. Watch watch uh, the wrestling. Watch the wrestling. Mm -hmm. Like, you'd get Royal Rumble or SummerSlam, and you'd pay, like... 24 bucks for the for the ticket or whatever but you would be there amongst like you'd feel like you were in the crowd at the wrestling so well yeah that's another thing it's a, i'm glad you brought that up because there has always been that kind of cachet to movie theaters just like what me and my cousin used to call call it like um having like uh i mean i don't remember what the term we use but basically it was it was describing that it was a movie or something that was worth paying a bit to see on that huge screen. Right. There's like a, like an event almost. Right. Yeah. And to me, I would pay a bit more to see a pay-per-view on a big screen like that with a, a crowd that's also into it. But I don't know that I would still stretch to 50 or 60 bucks for that. Yeah. Cause you're thinking to self besides the ticket being 24 bucks you're looking at probably snacks being mm -hmm. 25 30 bucks as well this is like 20 years ago so i'm i'm assuming it now it would be more outrageous if they did it so yeah but you know what though like sure snacks are expensive mm -hmm. but you're still paying and getting something for that money right yeah absolutely. whereas if you're paying 50 bucks for the show you're getting the show and then you're getting hosed on top of that yeah, that's the thing too. Like, I mean, fight has because uh, I'm with you. I refuse to call it thriller. I'll call it fight. Same with Twitter. I call it Twitter, not X. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm uh, I'm with you in the in the regard of like breaking down the price, and then also, I mean, I don't know if I would watch it continuously after I pay that fifty bucks. If that makes any sense. What do you mean by continuously? Like watching it sit through the whole thing up in, at one sitting? No, no, no. Like they, they, they give you like it's fifty bucks, but then you get unlimited replays. Oh, jeez. Of, of the card, <laughs> and I'm just like, I don't know if I would go back and watch it like that same week or that same month or or like I don't want it to just sit in my um, saved folder on fight for like. 10 years and then be like, Oh, let me go watch all in from 2024. You know? Yeah. That's of no value to me. Like I, I might want to go back and watch certain parts of it again, in case I miss something or, you know, something like that. But I, I don't see any value in having it as a part of a collection or whatever. Like, yeah, these are things I know that there are wrestling people that are into just watching old you know, matches and stuff like that, and they get a kick out of that's fine, but that's not me. And I, I, once I've seen these things, I rarely go back and watch them again, unless there was something super special about it, or there's something going on that's modern, that's referencing something from back then. And it helps to see it. Yeah, absolutely. Like I know a lot of people who uh, go back and watch WrestleMania three on uh, YouTube and uh, they're like Hogan Andre, but, but I mean, the match of that, of, 
that card was Steamboat Macho. So I'm just like, why are you watching like Hogan struggle to lift up like 500 pound Andre when there's this masterpiece there too? Dude, I, I have a vague memory of maybe seeing that live, like not, not live in the, in the, in the stadium, but as a, as a pay-per-view kind of thing, maybe I was at a, a bar with my dad that had it on or something, but mm -hmm. I just vague memory of, of, of that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I go back and watch some stuff here and there for on YouTube, whatever's free, basically, I'll just go look at not, not cause I'm cheap, but I, uh, I don't want to pay for like the WWE network. That's the thing. So, Cause I know, I know it's moving to Netflix and Maybe. I think, I think the whole library is going to go there too, which would be kind of cool. That would be something. Well, you know what YouTube I find is actually good for. I'm not the kind of guy that follows it because, you know, see my previous remarks about time, but mm -hmm. uh, occasionally again, you hear something about something interesting or something cool that happened in stardom and they put a lot of their stuff on YouTube. And I find that that's really useful in that case. Yeah, yeah, Stardom's great. I, I like Stardom. And uh, Ice Ribbon, I think it's called, is the other women's uh, Joshi promotion. So. Oh, there's a whole bunch of them, yeah. I don't, But again, I don't really pay attention to most of them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because mm -hmm. I know in that one chat that we're in on Discord, um, it's mainly, I mean, they do cover some WWE, but it's mostly AEW, isn't it? No, they, they cover a bunch of WWE, too. It's just that... Um... If you recall the hard times when Vince was going crazy, yeah, that uh, really, how do I put it? It really disenchanted a lot of people with what was happening in WWE, and I and I gather that the uh, the hype for it has not really healed, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. So you'll still find WWE stuff on there, but it's not as well talked about. <laughs> it tends to yeah. mostly have to do with uh, Rhea, I think, these days. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, she's so she's so good. I I wondered too because um, we're seeing it more in uh, like the indies and like TNA and GCW, but like intergender wrestling. Like I feel like she could wrestle um, like a Sami Zayn or a Jey Uso or or even uh, dude. There's so many like female wrestlers that can definitely hold their own with men. It's just, they don't get a chance to. And that's, that's one of my, uh, you know, moonshot dreams that I don't think is going to happen is, is uh, this new deal that Tony Khan is signing for AEW would let them do intergender stuff on TV. I don't think it's going to happen, but that would be pretty amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Cause there's no reason like, um, I remember. I remember a few years ago. Did you ever watch uh, TNA? Or not really? Not particularly. It's one of those things. Again, if I heard about something fun or whatever, I'd check it out. But not not something I, you know. Yeah. Follow yeah. Pre Tessa Blanchard getting canceled for being like a a terrible human being. Um, <laughs> she she was pushed so heavily in TNA as like crossing that boundary of uh, being. Um, just wrestling the women to wrestling the men. Like, I think she even won their heavyweight title from Sammy Callahan. And then um, she, of course, got canceled afterwards because apparently she's, like, very bigoted towards uh, black people. And uh, it's like, yep, can't have you as the champ. So. Yeah, and also generally treating people in the locker room pretty crappy. Yeah, yeah. I never get, like, even in, like, everyday work, I never get – like understand people who are just like mean to other people in that regard. Like keep your, keep your shit to yourself, you know? <laughs> so uh, They're just low class. I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. But so speaking of the women wrestlers again, like even just in AEW, like Statlander, Jamie Hayter, and now Camille at least. And there's, and there, I'm guaranteed there could be a couple more. Definitely, definitely could have awesome matches with so many of the men there. And uh, Willow is, has done a whole bunch of intergender masks. Like, it's something that you always see in the indies, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a lot of them have ex experience doing it. And it's just when you get to TV, suddenly it's a no-no. Yeah. So um, speaking to that, J JCW, Jersey Championship Wrestling, which is like the the 
NXT of GCW has this tournament called uh, the Jersey J Cup um, every February. Anyways, uh, they have this wrestler named Masha Slamovich. She's also oh, yeah. in TNA. She's so been she, on Dark or something. She's been on AW at least once or twice, like yeah. years ago. Yeah, yeah. So she, so she was in that tournament to um, basically try and win their world title, and she was having like banger after banger. She was the only woman in the match, and <laughs> I mean in the in the con in the competition. But she was uh, matches like one through like the first round to um, the finals were just unbelievable matches, mm-hmm. sort of thing. So. You know yeah. what? Another another reason it doesn't make sense not to have intergender matches is because, like you know, the cat's out of the bag. Everyone knows that wrestling is quote unquote fake now, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, there's really not much risk to two professionals, you know, a man and a woman, squaring off in the ring. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, you're gonna tell me that uh, someone like Rhea or Statlander are somehow more fragile than someone like Orange Cassidy, right? Yeah, exactly. He's a great guy, but he's not huge, right? So if you put him against someone like Wardlow or someone, like, how is that any different? Yeah. There's a there's a match on the indies of um, Orange Cassidy versus Statlander for, like, some indie company's title, and it's it's brutal, man. Like, the way that they're hitting each other, it's like, oh, yeah. oh my God. For sure. <laughs> yeah. It's wild. Uh, so what did you think of uh, Jamie's return, Jamie Hader's return? Hmm. I don't know. To me, it's a, it's a bit of a wait and see thing because I do enjoy her work, but she was gone long enough that I, I, I think I expected a little bit more out of it than just a bit of a run in and then, you know, cut to a uh, promo. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, mean, I, I can't say anything bad about it, but that's that's my feeling. My thought on it was like I, I I've heard you know what the problem with the internet is is that now we know too much about like the backstage politics and things like that. Oh, so yeah. so uh in that regard, just just hearing that she and Britt Baker don't like each other anymore, and then you're like, but Britt Baker needs backup against Camille and and um uh, Mercedes Monet, like, doesn't it make more sense for Jamie Hader to uh, come in there as opposed to wrestling against Paige out of nowhere? So, yeah, well, eh, I, I don't know. I, I, you're right, but at the same time, like, we know all this stuff, but we still don't know anything because that's not proven. There's no fact here; it's just rumor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because I know. Wanna... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say you want to believe that everyone's friends and everything and whatnot. And obviously that's not something that always happens, but like until there's, and probably there will never be proof. Cause I don't think either of them are going to come out and say, yeah, I don't like her anymore, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, we're, we're, we're not going to know. And maybe we don't need to know. Yeah. Yeah. As fans, it's, it's literally to me as a fan, I just want to see what they're doing on TV. I don't care if like, who they're who they're dating or uh what they're doing behind the scenes i i uh i care more about like how the story is playing out on tv sort of thing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's it's one of the things that i think has in some cases suffered a bit since like the first couple of years of aew is that uh a lot of stuff seems to happen without any kind of sense just like, oh, these two, boom, it was a match. Yeah. And I still miss the rankings. And freaking Tony Khan and his tease last year or whatever about the rankings coming back, and they were back for like three weeks, and now, oh, ignore the rankings again. Yeah, yeah. Someone once described AEW as, uh, actually, as the, they described WWE and AEW as um, two men playing with uh two billionaires playing with their toys one 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 books as if he's playing with his toys and the other one poops on his toys <laughs> so, <laughs> it was like decide which one is which and i was like oh not cool but uh, um just watching think, sorry go ahead i think uh, i was just gonna say to that like i think it's obvious 
the you know what the differences between Tony Khan and Vince McMahon are though you know I I don't know if it's fair to say that you can't tell which was which is which in that case yeah yeah yeah, yeah absolutely although you can definitely tell well for as we know um and those listening who uh, don't watch wrestling t- um Tony Khan owns AEW and uh Vince McMahon you you'd have to be living under a rock not to know uh who he is but um tony khan essentially like the way that he books you can tell that he was like a fan of specific wrestlers growing up and now the guys who are reminiscent of those characters are the guys getting pushed so for instance like ftr love bret hart for it so they're always in the main event picture for the tag titles and it, it frustrates me so much because i don't think they're a good tag team um but they are constantly there like they're not the heart foundation and that's how he books them so yeah he he seems to book like hey that he gets an idea and i said hey that'd be cool let's do it and just like do, doesn't make any build up for certain things yeah my my other beef too is like every time there's um a championship feud it's just that one time for the for either a random episode of dynamite or for um a pay-per-view and then they move on to the next person it's no, it's no continuation like like uh for instance swerve swerve lost it to brian danielson and instead of being like hey i'm going to invoke my rematch clause it's like nope i'm gonna go after uh hangman and uh brian you go find uh someone else to uh challenge for your title <laughs> it's like we'll see. We'll see the thing there though is I, I kind of understand what they're going at there. Before, um, I don't remember what the, the event was, but if you remember before, they were building up to something with Hangman and Swerve, and that just kind of went off the rails somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Hangman went away for a while, and Swerve was free to just build up his his uh, reign or whatever on his own. Um Danielson kind of comes out of nowhere for this. Not really, but still kind of. And he wins it. And I think that gave them a green light to uh, continue the feud with Hangman. And I mean, past month or so, Hangman's always been in and out of there, kind of making himself known and setting little tidbits and breadcrumbs for what was going to happen, I think. But... mm, I don't. Know. We'll see how it goes. I, I'm I'm still enjoying that that bit. Yeah, it's it's interesting too with wrestling that um, you can literally break into another guy's house and terrify his family, and you'll be the face in the feud. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like, it's like no, Hangman's the good guy here, people. And he's like, um, like when Hangman came back, he was uh, he literally cut that promo on on AEW Digital where he's just like, the man broke into my house. He terrified my family. Um, he basically, like, traumatized everybody. And now yeah. I have to go get him. And you guys all love him because he's Swerve. And it's like, yeah. what? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, fu- it's funny. It sort of reminds me because, like, uh, wrestling's all about repetition so it sort of reminds me of when like randy orton used to break into triple h's house and in in like the mid-2000s so well I, i've never seen that but what i was thinking of was uh the whole thing with um oh man what, what's his name that had the uh whose kid was in AEW briefly i should know it it's just his name is just escaping me right now the, oh. the loose cannon. Oh, Pillman. 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 Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Brian Pillman. Yeah. The, the, his thing with uh, Stone Cold. That's what it reminds me of. Oh, yeah. Very much so. Yeah. I see that too. Yeah. Very much so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just, just minus like pulling out a gun and <laughs> threatening <laughs> him. <laughs> I don't think that would fly today, but I bet, I bet you if they could, they would. I still remember when um, the NWO debuted with uh, WWE, uh, where it was Nash Hogan and Hall, and um, they went after Stone Cold. And Stone Cold like literally pulls a gun out on um, SmackDown and kid and kidnaps Scott Hall. 
and, and like Kevin Nash screams like like he's got a gun and you can hear the crowd le legitimately thinking it's real and like people start booking it for the exits and then <laughs> it's like no 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 it's just a storyline it's just a storyline so crazy crazy stuff please don't leave the arena yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's all it's not real it's not real. I swear he's not gonna murder him <laughs> but yeah crazy um how's Baldur's Gate going Baldur's Gate Baldur's Gate yes uh, I finally finished it like a month ago oh nice and uh just waiting for my uh girlfriend to have some free time so we can play through it together again together again oh nice nice that's yeah. awesome I yeah. thought was that the one you were playing with that group of pals as well? Or? I'm still playing it with them whenever they think they find time to do it. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. I um I've I've been saying to you and Casey um that the three of us have to find a game as well to play at some point. So uh, that's fine with me. Yeah. Uh I know a lot of people like in our age bracket, so like 35 to like 45 that are for some reason very much into Fortnite. so <laughs> i don't know if you'd ever want to play but i'm just like there's people who are always like hey eric you want to play Fortnite with me and i'm just like if i want to die for the first two months sure <laughs> yeah i have no interest in that or like league of legends or things like that stuff stuff that's too competitive and sweaty i don't do anymore yeah i i um used to play those games my problem my problem with those is like I've never been competitive at it partially because I can't control my um, character's head movement. So he's always looking he or she, Yeah, he's always looking down at the ground and getting like tagged from behind. <laughs> so mm -hmm. every time every time I, I come back to life, somebody's like right behind me shooting me. And I'm like, yeah, this game isn't for me. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I've, I've always been much more happy with um sorry cooperative games and competitive ones anyway again it's not that i can't compete i mean i'm getting older so it's i'm less able than i used to be but i'm i've always been pretty good at video games and it's just that i don't want to spend my time on like esports type of things where there's no resolution to anything i don't care to hold you know some kind of victory over other people or whatever it's not it's not interesting to me yeah yeah, I was I was recently playing uh, the Division Two with a couple of uh, Twitter pals, and I had like no friggin' idea what I was doing for the first like th uh, month of that. Mm -hmm. And they're like, "Hey, you want to play with us?" And I'm just like, "Like, do you want to keep playing with us?" And I'm like, "No, I'm just gonna bring you down. Like, I just, I just really don't want to play." So, but um, but yeah, it's it. I mean, the Division is an interesting game. It's just frustrating as hell if you like don't know what you're doing so oh for real for real yeah um what are you watching anime wise now mm. uh, i can actually tell you so i just finished delicious and dungeon which is a great little show uh that's about a party of adventurers that uh, lose one of their number to a dragon, the dragon eats her. And so the rest of the season is about them trying to get back down to the dragon to rescue her. Uh, but along the way, since they can't afford food to bring food with them, they, they kill monsters in the dungeon and eat the monsters and make uh, fanciful dishes out of them. Okay. And then, Sorry, is that on um, Netflix Actually, or is that on uh, Netflix? Yeah, nice. Yeah, so nice. I, w I would check it out if you enjoy anything like that. It's pretty uh, humorous and also really well acted. I'm nice. Casey will will probably give me disapproving noises, but I'm watching the dub of that. <laughs> it's quite well done. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I'm still watching uh, My Hero Academia, but it seems like it's slowing down a bit. Like uh, this uh, season seven so far has just all been like one, I think I'm what, 10, 12 episodes in and it's like all been one big fight so far. And that's getting a little tiring to be honest. Yeah. 
I oh, I'm trying to find this list that Casey sent me like uh, a while back um, for for some of the stuff to watch. So Gurren Lagann, I finished, which is I, I think that's fantastic. Uh, that was a good show. I actually uh, helped fan sub it way back in the day, believe wow, it or not. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's I've been awesome. around that long in, in the geek sphere. Nah, you're only you're only like uh, like you're not a hundred. So <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not yet. Getting there. Getting there. But not. Yeah. Uh, did you ever watch um, uh, Samurai Champloo? Nope. Yeah, he recommended that one too because uh, apparently, like, I got a bunch that are highlighted here that uh, essentially are um, like shorter than a thousand episodes. <laughs> That's most of them. Like, don't, don't except one, one piece. piece. Except yeah. one piece. <laughs> don't use one piece as your benchmark here because pretty much everything will be below it. Yeah, um, like Full Metal Alchemist, I still have to watch Brotherhood. I still have to watch that. Um, Hunter, yeah, I saw the original version of the anime, and it wasn't that great after a certain point. I hear that Brotherhood is the better of the two, but I don't really feel like going back and you know watching through that. Yeah, uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Too weird for me. You know what I remember for that? I don't think you were with your lady at the time, or I may be wrong, but when we went to... Uh, when Sports Center Cafe turned into that gaming, um, the Hive. Or, yeah, the Hive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I remember the girl who was like the waitress. One of the times we went there was big into like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and she was like talking to you about it. And and yeah. me and Casey were like, "Why don't you get her number?" And, and uh, you just shrugged. But I was like, I can't remember if you were with your your um, current partner or not at the time. You might have been, but pretty sure I would have been. Yeah, so we were, I was like, ah, interesting. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. That's cool. Um, mobs, like I know enough about it to know yeah. that I'm not going <laughs> to... It's not my thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Where was that anyway? Was that like young in college or... Young in St. Clair. Young in St. Clair. I'm yeah. just uh, looking it up on the map to see if anything has moved in since. Yeah, that, that one's long gone now, I think. Been a couple years. Yeah, wouldn't be surprised if they uh, knock down the building to build a, an even bigger building. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, Mob Psycho 100, ever heard of that? Um, I've heard of it. I think it's by the same guy that does One Punch Man. Yeah, yeah, that was the next one I was going to ask you about. And uh, I guess some people are into it, me not so much. Okay, the, the hive has turned into a place apparently called Gatherings Resto Bar. That sounds generic as hell. I have no interest in, in that. Wow, the interior is very, uh, very plain. Let's put it that way. Yeah. It's, it's very well lit, which is a bit of a turn off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, it's just to basically like hang out and watch sports. So it's basically Sports Center Cafe over again. Yeah, it's just a generic restaurant now. I mean, yeah. it's not even Sports Center Cafe because that had a that had more of a dank dankness to it and an atmosphere of sports. This just looks just like a place where you're going to go and eat. Yeah, yeah. I remember oh. actually funny funny story. So a couple episodes ago, I had. Um, Matt Cause from TSN on to uh, recap the Jaws movies with. Okay. And so um, back in like 09 or 10, uh, we actually were like with the same group of people every Sunday at Sports Center Cafe getting drunk. And like we didn't realize that we knew each other. So I was like, oh my God, I used to get drunk with you and watch the Giants and the Bengals. And he was like, oh, I remember. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah, this has been great, man. Like, I appreciate that you came on and everything. So where can, um, do you want people to find you or not really, or whatever? I don't know. I, I'm just a dude. doesn't really matter to me. I'm not, uh, I don't have anything to plug. Uh, yeah. you can find me online in a whole bunch of places under N-Bomb with a dash in there. 
If you do, great. If you don't, great. Yeah, that's fair. Um, you know what you got to do one day is get uh, me and Casey both on here together. Yes, I was just about to say that actually. Great minds think alike. So yeah, yeah the three the three of us can be on here talking about uh, anime for like three hours. <laughs> so or uh, just anything in general, yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Like it was fun just shooting the breeze uh, at Yorkdale the, um, a couple weeks ago, or about mm. a month ago, probably. That's uh, uh, well before I left for the U.S. So it would be. Just over a month ago, yeah, maybe five weeks or so. Yeah, that, that's crazy how time flies. Like I've, um, I'm between, I'm between gigs as we've discussed before, and like everything just seems so like compacted into like one week. Like my birthday was, uh, uh on Saturday, and yep. uh, and I'm just like, how is it Thursday already? Like this is crazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, anyways, this will go up probably this coming Saturday, uh, August thirty first. So I'll send you the link for it, yep. and. Um, for those listening, thank you as always. This is going to go up uh, before the uh, um, compartmentalizing uh, episode, which is going to come out next Wednesday. And um, on Sunday of this week, so September 1, you can expect an episode on Visionaries Global Media with Tom and myself recapping the gangs of New York. Uh, Ooh, exciting. Hope, hopefully that won't be seven hours but uh we'll see it's me and tom so it probably will be uh and then momo is coming back uh for september 8th to recap not one not two not three possibly four um taken movies with me but so looking forward to that as well anyways mm. thank thanks as always and nick thank you for coming on man yeah, I'm sure you'll see me again one of these days. Yep, absolutely. All right, see you, everybody. All right, later.